Creating through additive manufacturing is easy. No geometry is too complex. What's difficult to gauge is how the materials behave or how they may react to forces like temperature, stress, use, and more. ORNL is partnering with Zeiss Industrial Metrology to dive deep, as in nano deep, to explore and learn every bit of information that can be derived from the additive creative and production processes. With conventional manufacturing, we make a bulk piece of material. We can test that material, we can understand exactly how to characterize that material and know everything about that material. The challenge is getting the geometry, right? So now we have to figure out how to machine it or forge it or, or, or work it into a usable form. Additive is exactly opposite of that. We can get the form pretty easily, almost instantaneously. The challenge is how do I understand how that material is going to behave in this new geometry, right? Because the, the microstructure is different, the properties are different everywhere. And what we have to focus on is how do we actually certify and qualify that that is a good part that will actually function like we think it's supposed to function uh, when we put it in, into a service application. That can go anywhere from aerospace applications, the whole way down to nuclear applications and, and automotive applications anywhere in between. What's exciting about this particular project with Zeiss is that it really is on the leading edge. I mean, when you think about tomography, this is X-ray imaging. I mean, of course, it's great for 3D printing where you might have uh, cavities inside that you can't expect. They're using it for a lot of different capabilities, even things like inspecting engine blocks and so forth where you might do casting. So we're trying to create an industrial solution where people can know everything about the printed material at every length scale that's needed for their application. So in, in some cases, if you're talking about a prototype, maybe we only care about geometry. So we can use some of their coordinate measuring systems. We can use some of their uh, interferometry systems in order to get the geometric accuracy at say maybe the millimeter or submillimeter scale. So tomography is something, in fact, I think a lot of people are familiar with it. You see CT scans in the hospital and so forth. And those are, are lower, what I would call lower resolution than what we're looking at because here, microns or, or millions of an inch might might be very important. So we take that same part, we go over to a computed tomography system, we, we measure it and we can get all the internal porosity in that part so we can understand where all the defects are located. Then what we can do is we can actually take that to the next length scale, which would be something like a, on a microscope, right? So now you're either talking about optical microscopes or scanning electron microscopes, and now we're digging into the nanometer scale and the atomistic scale. And then all of that data is laid on top of each other. And so now what we can do is we can really dig into the fundamentals of what's driving the performance of that individual component. If you really understand additive technology and know what you're doing, additive can be an incredibly repeatable process. It can be make materials that are frankly better than the, the materials that we have anywhere else. And so what we're working on is how do you understand the additive process well enough where you can go through and specifically design a material and you can put it in an additive process and you can actually make superior properties than anything commercially available in other technologies. And so Zeiss has people embedded with us. Everything we're making, they're measuring it. And they're providing that feedback to us and to our industry partners in terms of what we need to be doing to the technology to make it perfect. This is not just Oak Ridge working in this facility. We have other, other industry partners embedded with us. We have universities embedded with us. It's an ecosystem. We're, we're printing uh, objects over here and we're building objects that have just never been built before. And we've got this new tool from Zeiss that allows us to, to work with them. And by the way, it's not just the tool, it's their personnel as well, working together to figure out how our new processes are, are working, but it also gives ICE a great opportunity to understand how their measurement systems are working. So we really have a, a great synergy between industry uh, and, and our operations over here. How might we provide power to small communities or areas of need in the future? ORNL is thinking about that too. This project is developing potential uses of additive manufacturing as a key factor into the nuclear power landscape. In, I think it was 2018, uh, Oak Ridge's lab director, Thomas Zachariah, uh, wanted to talk to me. And he said, do you think you could 3D print a nuclear reactor? And I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> that is wicked cool. Hell yeah, we've got to try. So the Transformational Challenge Reactor <laughs> 
is quite a crazy project. Um, we are looking to additively manufacture a working nuclear reactor and turn that reactor on in several years. And what the, the TCR is really looking at is how do we drive the next generation of what nuclear technology should look like? Um, and I think additive will play a critical role in that. And the more I learned about what a nuclear reactor is, it's just a big heat exchanger. We're taking nuclear energy and com converting it uh, to electricity. And so additive manufacturing is actually really good at making complex geometries like heat exchangers. If you think of, hey, I just have to print a heat exchanger, it's not as scary as, hey, I have to print a nuclear reactor. The goal is to 3D print the core of a reactor. It'll be about a meter in diameter, meter tall. Uh, it's supposed to put out about three megawatts of power. power small, rapid, but the big challenge is how do you certify and qualify these parts? We're actually using two different technologies uh, to print reactor components. Uh, one is laser powder bed fusion, very well-known additive technology. And then there's another technology that we've been using, which is binder jet. What's interesting about this is we've actually figured out how to print silicon carbide and infiltrate it with silicon carbide. So now I have a silicon carbide, silicon carbide composite, which is incredibly difficult to manufacture, and I can do it in extremely complex shapes, which is good for thermal conductivity and, and reactor design. So those are kind of the two main additive processes that will make up the core. ORNL and Zeiss are collaborating to keep their vision on the details, the most minute details imaginable. And the results may affect how the power industry serves the planet. It's all a matter of looking closely and deeply and learning.